I'm Dana Amendola. I'm the Vice President of Operations for Disney Theatrical Group. I also was a member of the original restoration team on the theater. The new Amsterdam Theater is the oldest operating theater on Broadway today. The theater was designed for Midsummer Night's Dream. And when you say this today, people shake their heads that you would design a theater for the show you're bringing into it. Talk about confidence. When you look around the theater, you'll see images of Puck and uh, different fantasy figures. In fact, the Grand Promenade, when you first walk in, looks like you're walking into a forest. Midsummer Night's Dream did not run that long. Subsequent shows they brought on did not run that long either. In 1913, Florence Ziegfeld arrived on the scene, and that was really the savior for the New Amsterdam Theater. He was an impresario that had a vision of what he called the Ziegfeld Follies. When you went to a Folly show, you were guaranteed beautiful sets, beautiful women, hottest new songs, funny comedians, everything. The productions were absolutely lavish, and the Follies was the hottest show in town. Right up till 1927, things were going strong, but after that, it's the beginning of the depressions. You also have talkies, movies start to show up. And so the new Amsterdam theater then became a movie house. By the 1940s, it had already started to go downhill. 42nd Street was not a desirable place to go. By the time the 50s and 60s rolls around, every theater on 42nd Street was showing X-rated films, except for the new Amsterdam theater. The owners put a provision in the lease that they could not show X-rated films here. So this glorious, beautiful theater became the premier kung fu palace of New York City. But by the 80s, it was closed up and time wore away at it. In the early 1990s, the 42nd Street Development Corporation was formed to rejuvenate the theaters of 42nd Street. The absolute worst was the New Amsterdam Theater, and they approached the Disney company to take a look at it. What they saw was a mess. There was two feet of standing water, thousands upon thousands of mushrooms, some the size of dinner plates. How do you preserve it? The first thing you have to do is keep it from falling down. It was a monumental project. We restored the building to the way it looked in 1920. The greatest testimony to me is we had some surviving Ziegfeld performers that actually came back in the 90s. They welled up and cried because it looked just the way they remembered it. The first show to go into this building was The Lion King. That was something no one had seen before. We moved Lion King over to the Minskoff Theater to make room for Mary Poppins. Cameron McIntosh, who was co-producing it with us, felt the beauty of this building looked very much like Victorian England. The New Amsterdam Theater really gels with Aladdin as well. We've been very, very lucky. The audience leaps to their feet. It is a certified hit. 42nd Street was often called the worst street in America. People started traveling in because they wanted to see a Disney show. Mayor Giuliani realized if people are going to be coming to Times Square, we'd better clean it up. It really was the spark that ignited the glorious rebirth of the entire area. It's wonderful that this little theater that almost fell off the face of the earth is back and go into the next century. Strong, beautiful, and delivering just what it promised.